This could be my first successful color lithophane. Let's check it out. What's up guys, I'm Thomas Brooks, the developer of lithophanemaker.com. To develop this particular lithophane, I got a lot of help from a guy named Jason Prius, so if you ever see him around, be sure to tell him thank you. To print this lithophane requires that you are able to print four different filaments simultaneously. I've got ideas on how to make it so that you can print a multicolor lithophane with a stock 3D printer, but for now, I think the best option for printing these is with something like the Palette 2. And I think it is the best way of printing with four filaments at a time that's available right now. To find out more about the Palette 2, be sure to watch my video review of it and check it out in the link that I put in the description. So I've already come up with several ways on how this can be made better, including making it possible to print a multicolor lithophane on a stock 3D printer, being able to print the lithophane vertically, and being able to print with more color options. But I have to know that you guys would be interested in me making those features available, and the way that I gauge interest is based on the number of likes and subscribes that I get from this video. So you know what to do. Now, let's get into how you can print one of these today using lithophanemaker.com in a palette too. So the first thing you do is you go to lithophanemaker.com and you upload the image that you want to turn into a multicolor lithophane. Below that, you can select whether or not you want to crop your image. If you crop your image, then you're able to make the width and the height whatever you want them to be. If you don't crop your image, then you just get to pick one of those and the other one is calculated based on the aspect ratio of your picture. Below that you have the lithophane resolution and that is the resolution of the topmost surface of this lithophane. I found that a value of 0.2 is normally good enough. If you go lower than that, the size of the STL files will become very large. Typically your printer is not going to be able to print with a greater resolution than 0.2 millimeters anyways. Next you have the colored resolution and as you can see on the back of this lithophane what you have are basically a bunch of pixels. The colored resolution value that you put in there is the length of the sides of the squares of these pixels. You need that value to be an even multiple of your line width. So say that you have a line width of 0.4 in your slicer, then you'd want to use a colored resolution of 0.8 or 1.2 or 1.6. The larger the colored resolution, the fewer attractions you'll have while you're printing it, and the less likely you will have a clog. But the more blurred the image becomes. The layer height is just the height of the layers that you will print. The first layer height is just the height of the first layer. Select it in your slicer to have a different height as the rest of your layers. It gives you the ability to make it so that you have a little bit more tolerance to an unlevel bed so that you do not lose color you just lose a little bit of white. So you want to make that first layer pretty fat to make it so that the colored portion of the lithophane is exactly what it needs to be. The width of the lithophane and the height of the lithophane are the size of the lithophane's footprint when you're printing it on your print bed. The maximum thickness of the lithophane is the maximum thickness from the back of the lithophane to the frontmost point of the lithophane. And likewise, the minimum thickness is just the minimum of that. To the right, you can shift your image left, right, or up and down, and you can change the size of the box if you want to zoom into the image a little bit. Below that is where you can get a preview of what your image will look like given the palette. The color palette is based on four filaments that I have selected and put at the bottom of this page that you need to use to get the correct colors, but it is limited in that the palette cannot make any color of the rainbow. Finally, you create the STL file. Next to the Create STL button, you can see the terms of use, and I encourage you to read those, but basically the gist is that I do nothing with your pictures, I just create the lithophane STL files, and then I delete the pictures, and I delete the STL files after you've had some time to download them. So I downloaded the file created by lithophanemaker.com, extracted the file into a folder, and then got what you see here, which are four STL files for the colored portion of the lithophane 
and then one STL file for the regular top portion of the lithophane. Also we have a text file which has the settings that were used to create the lithophane in it. I opened up these STL files and I put them into FreeCAD so you can see what's created. If I hide this top white lithophane then you see that you just have a blank flat sheet that contains all of the color. So if I rotate this around and I show you the lines now here you can see the first layer at the bottom right here and the remaining colored layers. And then on top of this bottom wedge of the lithophane that provides all the color, you have the regular lithophane, which you can see right here. Now you need to slice these for a multicolor 3D printing. And the correct way to slice these depends on the kind of multicolor 3D printing you're going to do. And I suggest joining the multicolor 3D printing group on Facebook, and I will leave a link in the description to that. I'm going to use the palette too and even for the palette too there are several ways to slice this lithophane but I'm going to use canvas which is the slicer that mosaic manufacturing is developing for the palette too so here I am in canvas and I'm in a folder in order to slice something you have to create a project so I'm gonna click new project and up here in the top right you can select your settings I'm going to drag my STL models over into the multi-material models side of the window. I like to color them all properly so in order to do that I hide all of them except for one and then drag the correct color to it. So you can see that this lithophane needs to be printed laying down. The reason it needs to be printed laying down is you can get more combinations of colors through the thickness if it's laying down because the layer height is going to be smaller than the extrusion or line width of any 3D printer. So by printing it laying down we can have a greater diversity of color options so that your colored lithophane looks as close to the original picture as possible. But I do have an idea on how to make it possible to print the white portion of the lithophane standing up and also how to print a colored lithophane with a stock 3D printer with just a few filament swaps. So those are future updates that we could get if I see that there's interest in me making them possible. In order for this to work well, your settings and your slicer need to match the settings that you put into lithophanemaker.com. So in my case, I put in lithophanemaker.com that the first layer would have a height of 0.2 millimeters. You can see I made that match here, and then the rest of the layers would have a height of 0.1 millimeters, and I also made that match right here. In lithophanemaker.com, I also used a colored resolution of 1.2. The colored resolution divided by the shell thickness needs to be a whole number. So since my colored resolution was 1.2, my shell thickness can be 0.4, it could also be 0.6, either one would work, but 0.4 is closer to what I normally print with given that I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Also you need to make sure that the extrusion width is 0.4, and some slicers call this the line width, it's got different names, but it's basically just the width of the lines that are extruded out while your printer is going around printing. I also found that the printer often does many retractions while printing this, so I made sure that my retraction speed was pretty low, and then also because I have a direct drive, I wanted my retraction distance to be lower than you probably would with a Bowden. You can also see in here some additional settings that relate to the transition between different filament colors. You can adjust these settings to make sure that you get the right color where you want it. For example, if you find that you still have some yellow after you're supposed to have transitioned to blue, and you end up with sort of a greenish color when you want a blue color, you would want to increase this transition length. However, the larger the transition length, the larger the transition tower will be, so you really want the transition length to be as small as possible while still getting the transitions correct. I haven't messed with these settings too much, but if you're concerned about waste, this is a knob that you can turn. So here's the sliced lithophane in layer view and if I scroll down and look deeper into the lithophane I can get to the colored portion of the lithophane still color coded and you can see what is a proper looking layer view of a colored lithophane where you can see every single pixel. It takes an extra five minutes to print in color because you have to wait for the palette 2 to splice a bunch of different filament pieces together and get those to your extruder before you can start the print. So of course, after you have finished slicing, you just download the G-code and then print it.
As a free bonus, you also get a wipe tower with your color lithophane. You can see that the wipe tower weighs approximately 10 grams and the lithophane weighs about 77 grams. So that amounts to an increase in filament usage of about 13%, which is very efficient for a color printing process. If you have any other ideas on how I could make this better, please leave them in the comments below. If you want to have the ability to print a colored lithophane on a stock 3D printer, then be sure to like and subscribe. Now I'd like to show you the amazing people that keep lithophanemaker.com online. These are my patrons and thank you very much for your support. I will see you guys next time.